my concern as a clinician is that when you start describing everything as a potential consequence of a particular disease, now you've taken away diagnostic specificity, right? If everything can be caused sure. by it, then I don't know what to make of that. It can be specific patterns. There's only three maybe specific symptoms. The expanding erythema migraines rash, chronicum atrophic, um, atrophic ends, ACA rashes, ACA deterioration, which you which rarely see. Yeah, which I've seen a half dozen times. And it's, uh, the skin right. gets paper thin in the wrist and the ankles. Chronicum, um, uh, it's ACA, we call it, okay? okay. So anyway, and then uh, toyos phenomenon, is right. which is uh, loud noises can no cause nausea and, and uh, vomiting sometimes and dizziness, which you only see with syphilis or Lyme. Those are the only three truly specific things. But uh, here's a problem. Easy diseases that are easy to find, we've already figured out. What we're left with are the things that have multiple contributors, multiple pathophysiological pathways, and multiple manifestations. So no two patients end up with exactly the same symptoms. So we have to have a different disease model for complex disease that is different than what we're used to having, where it's a simple, clear thing, where you can diagnose it with one thing. Uh, so we have to think of statistical probabilities of, of symptoms and pattern recognition, it, it takes a more complicated way of adding all this together. And, and you're not talking about actually making a calculation of, of statistical likelihood. This is all what's in, going on in your brain. Right. It's right. clinical well, judgment. It's, 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 it's all judgment. judgment. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. It's right. your experience in dealing with the art. Other, that's the art of medicine. Are there other tests that we could do? I mean, we've got the, there are the, other the ELISA tests. tests. We've got all these other tests. Well, two tests. What else is out there that can help you nail this? We're, we're involved in the study of two tests that are very promising. One is called the NanoTrap, which looks at a highly specific protein called OSP-A that is found across multiple strains of Borrelia. And what this technology does is it super concentrates in a urine sample the presence of this protein and then it further tests and it's uh, a thousand-fold more sensitive than the standard Western blot. Okay. In, a, in our 2015 <clears throat> paper that was published uh, in the Journal of Translational Medicine, um, the preliminary erythema migraines patients, which very often is negative in the ELISA test because they haven't had an, an, a time amount to respond immunologically, but 24 out of 24 EM patients were positive for the nanotrap. Right. So let me, let me play devil's advocate and say that when you make a test sufficiently sensitive, it may become insufficiently diagnostic. That is, everybody turns positive. No, it's highly specific though. Okay, tell me about It's that. highly specific and as far as the uh, authors of the study feel that the false positivity is very low. But does that mean that you've been exposed or that you're actively it's infected? It's an antigen, okay. so your active infection. And, and there are studies to show that an infection should be cleared and no antigen should be present within 72 hours of that infection being cleared by so the body. The obvious question that brings to mind is somebody who's positive by that study, given appropriate antibiotics, improves clinically, does that study then go negative? Yes, it has. And in fact, it, I provided 100 patients with chronic disease, 42% of whom were positive, one of whom was an MS patient who was symptomatic when she was first studied and asymptomatic when she was studied subsequently. She was positive initially and negative afterwards. All this suggests that patients with an ongoing Lyme-related issues, and I'm being very careful with the syntax, um, often wind up with lots of different doctors, lots of different clinical situations. Um, the provider path here is an issue. Can yes. we just return to, to the testing for a moment? Because there, sure. that, that is a fascinating new technology. There's polymerase chain reaction that's available. It's not very well, it's not that's often sensitive. used, and it shouldn't be used. It's, right. it's a, a research tool. But it's not the sort of thing that the average clinician should be ordering. Um, there was a, a, a technology that the, the late Michael Brunner and I worked on back at, at Robert Wood Johnson looking for immune complexes. An immune complex can only be formed if there's an antigen and antibodies against it. So we took, we concentrated immune complexes, broke them up, and then looked for antigen, OSPE, 
mm -hmm. as well as antibody against Borrelia burgdorferi and found it to be a remarkably useful tool in diagnosing people who had active infection, some of whom were seronegative, right. and people who had, had been treated and were now asymptomatic because they had been treated appropriately and had gotten rid of the Borrelia. The right. problem is that it's a very, it's a tedious sort of technology. Right. Very useful, but not easily done. And so that's what we're looking for now, is a, a technology that's sensitive and specific, which is a very difficult that's balance to, 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 to manage, and a technology that can be ramped up to make it a commercial tool. Well, we, just to, to follow up that point, quickly, and I think it's getting a little long, but go right, ahead. Right, right. We are actively involved in FDA approval of erythema migrans patients to the goal being to have a CLIA waived in-office test with that technology. Wouldn't that be We're nice? 18 be months, to have 24 months away from that, but that's the goal. Wouldn't that, that, that be great? Yeah. We wouldn't be having this broadcast. If we had the, the, well, the line yes, test, we would. we'd be able to have a different broadcast. There are other things I, I we would talk like, about. I would yeah, like please. to address this issue sure. because it's frustrating sitting here. I've been involved 33 years, and I look at what has happened. You can all talk about these tests, and I certainly was actually going to bring up the, what Dr. Siegel mentioned because we had funded Dr. Schutzer at UMDMJ who uh, initially looked at those immune complexes, and he actually proposed that test to the CDC, and they didn't want to hear about it. Why? And, well, that's a good question. Well, that's I don't why know I asked why. it. <laughs> yes, well, what I'm saying to you is the CDC is very reluctant to move on to new technology. I've been, I've been invited out there twice to Fort Collins. We've brought it up as advocates. The physicians have brought it up. Researchers have brought it up. They want to stick with a two-tier antiquated test that, again, is probably missing at least 50% of our patients. So I, a lot of what we're talking about, um, in reality, we're not going to accomplish unless the CDC moves off the dime. 